What's up, guys? Welcome to episode three of All Access, the Freetography Podcast. Real quick, guys, before we get to today's interview, I have a favor to ask of you. Whatever platform you are listening to my podcast on, please leave a review on that platform and uh, give a good review and help get this podcast seen by more people. So moving on to today's episode, I do believe I am the first and only podcast in Canada on urban exploring. The majority of my guests will be Canadian, but we will definitely be speaking with other explorers from all around the world. Today's episode comes from my Polish friend currently residing in China. Greg Abandon is a very passionate man and explorer. He travels all over the world in search of the most incredible abandoned places. Greg's Chasing Bandos podcast launched in 2020. So enough of all that. Let's head to China and speak with my good friend, Greg Abandon. Okay, guys, here we go. Episode three with Greg Abandon. He is the podcaster, is now the podcast E on the All Access Photography Podcast. So 100,000 downloads, 124,000 Instagram followers, the man behind the largest and the most listened to Urbex podcast currently. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Greg yeah. Abandon. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being my guest. And I do have to start off by saying I have mentioned in my previous uh, two episodes that you are the inspiration for me having done this. Aww. After we did your first mm. podcast to, with me, uh, I had a lot of people reach out and say, man, you speak really well. You should do your own podcast. Mm. Then after the debate, I got even more people calling in saying, man, oh, like yeah. you were so good in that podcast. You should run your own. So I was like, I don't know. Do I have that much to say? Am I interesting enough? And then I'm like, well, it's not yeah. about me, right? It's me bringing you guys and, and to my audience, you know? And yep. uh, so anyways, I thought about it. I hummed and hawed over it. And then I decided, let's just pull the trigger on this. And I, I started coming up with some graphics, with a name, with my, my plan would be, who I'm going to talk to. And, uh, you know, it's all thanks to you. So I have you to thank. And uh, oh. let's get started. Let's get right off the bat. Tell us about wait, Greg. Wait, 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 Dave, wait. I just, I just <laughs> want to say, I just want to say, I'm very pleased that you're doing this. I can see the, the Ninja Licious inspiration in the name, right? I think I'm right there with all access. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. There, there you go. And yeah, so like, I'm, I'm really pleased. Like, you were absolutely amazing on those podcasts. And then I hope. I just hope that because you are now a host of your own podcast, that you still have time to come back on Chasing Bandos, you know? Like, I still hope. Always. That's always. Oh, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> what, you, what you've got going, which is great, is the idea behind the debate episodes and mm. and other ideas that would require a panel or a group of people. And you're mm. actually very good at choosing who you know, would fit into the right slot for these episodes. And that's where mm -hmm. I'm happy to come in and add my, you know, my knowledge, my expertise, my opinion, you know, play the good guy, play the bad guy. Mm -hmm. I can play either way. <laughs> but you know what? At the same time, I feel like I have to tell you, like, I'm sorry because you've waited so long. Just imagine if we had this podcast with you like a year ago, like I promised. <laughs> By yeah, now yeah. <laughs> you should you would by now you would have been like uh you know podcasting for for a year I, I bet yeah, yeah yeah that's all right it all ha it all happens everything falls into place for a reason so um yeah. that's great so let's get into the uh I got a number of questions to ask you so tell us and the listeners about Greg as a person Greg the explorer uh how and when did you get into exploring abandoned places. Greg as a person is an asshole. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like Greg realized that he's an asshole and he's trying to change and not be selfish. No, no. But um, yeah, um, how would I say this? I was lucky, Dave. I, I must say, like you know, I was just lucky to discover this hobby. I, um, God, I mentioned this. So many times, like the big event in my life was the divorce. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, this was like, I was like a, a nerd playing video games, you know, on Xbox, earning achievements and stuff. 
And I like the divorce changed everything because like it's something that you don't expect, especially after 12 years, you know, like I was, I was 20 and 32, boom, you know, the end. Wow. And, um, and yeah, um, just like didn't know anyone else, you know? Um, so it, it was all, all crazy. The same time I met this guy and, you know, I kind of just suggested to him, Hey, how about we go to Chernobyl? And he was crazy enough to agree with me. And I, I just, um, I, I always had this fascination with those places. So like I was this nerd doing like the, um, you, you know, like playing games, but I was always uh, like the admirer of the places, like people like you, you know, other explorers. Like I would see this stuff. Like I didn't know this thing existed on, on Instagram because I didn't really have Instagram. Um, right. I just, um, I just would, I would see like from time to time, some articles and things online. And I would always be amazed at like, how, for like, how, how is this possible? Mm-hmm. Like how people find this, where is this? Oh my God. So all the annoying things that people ask me now, it was like, <laughs> I was, I was, I was that guy, you know, I was like, I couldn't believe it. And, um, and yeah, going to Chernobyl changed my life. Um, that was the moment. I really, I really remember this moment. Like I was um, standing on top of the building, looking at this panorama of this like overgrown city. And man, man, I just, I just knew from that moment, light switch moment. I, I, right. I, I knew, I knew it. I knew it. I, I have to find places like this. It was it was the, you know, as a kid, when you open that Christmas gift, that yeah. feeling you get, the excitement. Yeah. yeah. The two days, the two days I was in Chernobyl, every single moment I felt like this. It was incredible. Changed your life, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's great. That's what I mean. I mean, you pretty much started at the top then. <laughs> you know, you got guys like me started up just doing stupid dumpy houses. You started at Chernobyl. <laughs> no wonder you're so obsessed with the space shuttles because <laughs> where else can you go from Chernobyl, right? It's only down from there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. 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 yeah maybe there's maybe so you're currently something. based. You're currently based in China, uh, but you don't look or sound Chinese. So <laughs> my first thought was you might be German or Austrian. Uh, so what's your background and where are you from? Ni hao, ni hao, ni hao ma. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I am Polish. I, I mean, I okay. have two passports. I have a British passport and Polish passport. So when, um, when I could, uh, I escaped Poland. <laughs> I, I left Poland. <laughs> I always joke about how terrible Poland is, but I think Poland has changed a lot. Uh, this was a long time ago, you know. This was this was long time ago when I when I left. It was twenty years ago, right. and uh, yeah. So when I was um, when I was like uh, nineteen twenty something like that, I I just I just I just left. I couldn't stand uh, being in that household <laughs> in that country. So <laughs> I just uh, I just left. Yeah, and then um, yeah, then the whole English adventure started until I fell out of love with England, and I just tried again. I just tried something else. Um, I got a job in China. Like I wasn't really technically planning to come here specifically, but okay. I just got a jo- I just got a job here, and then I discovered like holy shit, like China has so many, <laughs> so many amazing <laughs> places. My God, yeah, wow. I yeah. wish I knew that. Yeah. So are you planning to stay in China or you have another destination in, in your future? Uh, well, well, you know this. I'm not sure your listener know this. I very recently had this. Um, I was, <laughs> I like to say I was given a second life, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a fall and I almost died. Mm-hmm. And now I'm in recovery. I'm learning how to walk again. I actually quite. I actually like walking. I'm like li- like an eight year old. I- I'm walking now. Wow. And um, you know, I always um, China has been good for like saving money, like for sure, right? Like it was. It was it, financially. It's been. It's been great. So I was just thinking, like, you know, when I'm sixty, and I look back after being here five years now, if I look back, like, okay, I can say, yeah, I stayed for one more year and I just make, and I saved this amount of money. Or 
I could just go and travel, just go and travel the world and right. just take a, just take one year sabbatical. Um, you know, one year, what, what the hell, you know, like I can make yeah. memories for the lifetime. But the biggest yep. thing was this, this injury, man, this injury was like, just made me think like you have to really value life. And you, mm -hmm. and it's just, and you got one life, you got one life. Yeah. And like, when am I going to go to Iceland and Egypt and all the other places and like, just to right. some remote places that I always wanted to go, but there's never time to go because never. you work. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I have to do it. So this summer I'm going back, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm making Spain my home for the next year. Oh, great. And I'm just. And I'm okay. just going to go, go from Barcelona. Basically, I'm going to go to different places. Yep. Wow. That's fantastic. Now, mm. is that going to be a sabbatical or are you able to work remotely in your current job or are you just going to leave mm -hmm. and travel? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving my job. Yeah. So you yeah. touched on, uh, the topic of your injury. Now you've already told this story on your podcast and I don't want to mm. steal your thunder. So I'm going to link your podcast episodes, there's two of them down below uh, for the mm -hmm. listeners to go to the Chasing Bandos podcast and listen to what happened mm -hmm. to Greg. So I have a number of questions that I ask, mm -hmm. you know, I'm starting to ask everybody. Um, I feel like I know the answer to this one, but what are some of your favorite adventures and explorers that you've been to that you're able to talk about publicly? Well, like, it's, it's, it's this <laughs> <laughs> yep yep <laughs> um you know it this this one is quite like this one is like super obvious like you know people ask sorry uh, for those that like, are not watching the video there is oh, a picture yes. behind greg of the bronze space shuttles he's pointing to the space shuttles behind him <laughs> yes. thank you dave thank you for being the host yeah, yeah. yes 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 yeah. um i you know people ask me like what was your like favorite the the best day of your life that kind of stuff like favorite explore and it's hard to beat this one um not just because of like the historical significance of those two shuttles being trapped in that hangar um not just because of the size of them and the fact that not many people have a chance to sit in that chair you know, yeah. the astronaut chair, uh, which yeah. I had a chance to do it. Um, but is this, oh, it's just that, that whole journey, man, is the journey that like mm -hmm. what it took to do it, the training, the walking with that bag at night. Cause yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't a hiker, you know, I had to research this. Like I had to learn about the distribution of weight in, in the, in your bag. Right. And it's the bag that the, the, it's not the hike. It's not like walking, right? Like walking no, it's, for it's like the ten. weight. It's the weight, right? That kills you. Yeah. And you have to prepare, you have to bring the water for like, because I was there on the site for two days, you know, slept, right. um, slept in there. So it just going through all of this and yeah, I was super lucky, man. I was, I was really lucky, um, not to get caught and like, just be, be successful in there. I, I, I did it after the launch. I, mm -hmm. cause like I, I figured that, you know, like when you work in a, in a company and there's some sort of project and everyone is like cramming towards the deadline and everyone is stressed yeah. and everything. That's how I felt, um, about this, uh, this place that they have a launch and, um, they, I think they had a launch towards the end of September. And I thought to myself, like, you know, after things like this, kind of like people relax a little bit, like, oh, it's totally. over. Yeah. yeah. So I, I felt like the security would be much, much more relaxed after that. And I, I think, I think it was, I think I was right because we went to like early October and, and yeah, I saw, I saw the Jeeps, I saw the security, um, from the distance from the building, but I was lucky no one ever entered the building because, you know, I, I interview other explorers and that very frequently happens when, when the security and the soldiers, they come in and they just yeah. listen, they listen for any sound. But yeah, I was lucky. <laughs> so yeah. when it comes to exploring, do you prefer to explore alone 
or with a group? And I feel like that answer might have changed since your recent event. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny that you say this because like uh, for me, I had, when it comes to my exploring life, there's two parts of it, right? There's the, like a pre-China and post-China. Pre-China, this was like a Greg who was like uh, exploring stuff, but had no idea that there are other people doing it. And so I was um, mainly by myself. Um, sometimes I would go with my brother. Sometimes I would like, um, I remember meeting the explorer from um, Bulgaria, Evgeny. I went to, to, to Bulgaria to see some places. He was showing me some places. I remember giving him like some, some, some like 50 euros or something for his time. Mm -hmm. And um, after China, I would say, just because of the lack of explorers here and, you know, just I didn't have anyone to link with. It's not just because I didn't want to, but like I just didn't, didn't, um, didn't have people to explore with. So I actually turn, if that's the right word, I turned some people into explorers. So I went okay. with some fr friends here, some Chinese friends who after going exploring, they absolutely loved it. Uh, they loved it. And so they mm -hmm. became an explorer. They, they started going to, uh, and explore places. Maybe they are not like so prolific, uh, but mm -hmm. they definitely love it. And mainly I would go with one other person here. It was either okay. them or it was my girlfriend um, from time to time. Uh, but I would go by myself many times. Um, and... You know, after this, 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 this injury, it's like, it's really hard for me to say this because, you know, exploring by yourself actually wasn't too bad. Like it was like all your senses are working. You are very careful. Totally. I know how I, I know how I sound right now. You are very careful. Yeah. And then you almost died. No, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you know, it's like, um, you don't have to worry about anyone else. Um, mm -hmm. you decide, you decide on everything. And totally yes yeah 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 and and it's just you and um so in a way it is it is pretty awesome but at the same time i don't know i think you need to there's some pros and cons and you need to decide for yourself i mean definitely you should like let someone know where you're going totally because yeah yeah and like hey if you don't hear from me um like you need to come, come and help. Yeah, this is <laughs> Cause, where I'm at. Cause I'm, yeah. <laughs> cause, uh, cause, cause I'm dying. I'm dying here. Mm. Having done the podcast for as long as you've done it and talked to and met as many explorers as you, as you have, you've met a lot of interesting people. Um, mm. Who do you take uh, inspiration from? You know, who are some of your favorite explorers out there that you like to, that, that you follow and that, that sort of inspire you? You don't have mm. to say me it's just cause I'm here. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's Dave. It's Dave, guys. <laughs> Canada. Canada is a gem. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I want to go to Canada. Aniox. Come on. Let's do it. Yeah. Aniox and Kitzel. I want to do it. Um, totally. Yeah. You, you know what? You know what, Dave? It's funny that you say this because when you were asking this question, I, was, I started to think about this right away. And funny enough, what kind of comes to my mind actually is... <laughs> it's people that are not explorers, you know, because mm -hmm. I was, um, during my time here in China, I went also to North Korea, to Pyongyang, and I am a little bit obsessed with North Korea. So, um, in a way I wanted to do something with North Korea on this podcast. And I kind of like, I mean, I kind of called it like a dark tourism. So I did this like yeah, a 10 part, yeah. 10 part mini series. And actually the, the, this, 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 um, <laughs> this series is actually like quite one of the most popular. <laughs> it's like one of the best episodes on North Korea. Some people just yeah. turn up uh, to, to, to turn in for just that. But you <laughs> know, there were like, there were just people like the uh, Sun Hyu Lee who escaped. Uh, her story was just that amazing. That's crazy that you got her. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and, yeah. you know, my final episode was with this guy, Ehrlich, um, Larson, this guy who spent 10 years undercover in those like, um, 
in, in, throughout Europe, there are those like a, a North Korean friendship associations or Korean okay. friendship associations. And they're like uh, those crazy people who like follow the regime and they like support the regime. Uh, but they are Westerners. And he like infiltrated this um, organization and actually went mm -hmm. to North Korea and like expose uh, the uh, the guys for like just basically being criminals for 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 the criminal activity and talking to him you know it kind of just gave me this feeling of like it's just like Dave how many times have you heard people saying like oh my god you are brave for doing this like this is so dangerous you like you <laughs> yeah. you 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 go to those places and and it's dangerous and like you you're so brave and i'm thinking to myself like okay there is brave but there is this guy you know there's this guy who yes. he did this he was you know he actually risked his life literally mm -hmm. risked his life in order yep. to expose this thing and like that's what i call bravery that is totally. that, I agree. That, yeah yeah he was he was a really inspirational guy um and to hear him tell this story was amazing yeah i i actually feel like i maybe i should uh mention um mention some explorers i uh, speaking of danish people there is an explorer called um Jan Elhoy, and this is a Danish guy. He is actually on TV in Denmark. He's like a t TV personality, but at the same time, he does Airbex. It's just amazing. Okay. And <laughs> he is—he was in a group of four explorers who went to Burand. And I like to say that in my previous life, before Airbex, I saw an article of four guys. Um, mm -hmm. I think there were two Dutch guys and to Danish maybe. Yeah, yeah. And this is the story I heard. And this is how I learned about the Buran. I was like, oh my God, how is this possible? Of those right. four guys just trucking through this desert and getting there. And I was just amazed. Yeah. And you know, and now I, I do talk to these guys and one of them has been exploring for over 40 years and he's still exploring. Wow. And awesome. this, guy is, wow. this guy is amazing. Yeah. So I love Jan Elhoy. So talking about, you know, some of the larger risks that you've taken and, you know, I, I've seen the places that you go and they're some pretty legendary places, but have you had any serious run-ins with the law or uh, not? I mean, security is whatever, security is whatever, but when you have problems with the law, that's a whole different story. Anything there? How about Chinese national security? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so um i my first biggest trouble in china i think it was maybe five or six months in i'm here right yeah <laughs> and i'm thinking and i'm thinking to myself once i got caught right and i was like oh my god greg like you, you just got here and now you're gonna get deported <laughs> like you just literally <laughs> got here man like, yeah. come on, come on. And, okay, so there was, there was a, a place that I thought was abandoned. Um, how do I describe it? Uh, you must have heard of this bone, plain bone graveyard in Arizona, where yes. there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of planes. So I yeah. came across an article in, uh, in, um, on Chinese media about a similar place and that was the comparison that was a comparison there to okay. this american one but in china and then i started scanning and scanning the maps they only mentioned the province and then i went in there and i just like ages spent ages doing it <laughs> and um i finally found it and uh, when i went there um I just started flying a drone and like within like a minute, literally like a minute or two, um, a soldier on a scooter just like turns up and like bring your, <laughs> bring your drone back. And, you know, I, I, I was, um, I think right away when I started flying, I realized that something is wrong because like I can see okay. a column of soldiers walking and, you know, all I had, all I, <laughs> and some truck driving inside. Right. But all I had, to, all I wanted to do is to, um, because the place was so huge, I wanted to, um, fly my drone really far away so I can have like a, a shot of all the planes. But 
right. you know, I'm I'm just like I'm just backing backing up with this drone, and then I see like the soldiers, and then I see mm -hmm. the truck, and I'm like, wait a second, what the hell is happening? So I, I actually didn't really have time to think about it because like I, I right. by the time I realized he was already there, and I was taken to this interrogation, and it was just you know it was ten hours of like trying to explain why I have pictures of like tanks and planes on my, oh my laptop and, on my, yeah, and, and you see and in that moment everything makes you uh look guilty because like have you <laughs> uh have you take have you ever taken pictures of military equipment well right yeah but they all abandoned <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no, so so like i had i had a lot of explaining to do um they they interviewed my girlfriend at the time and she Basically, what they did was they tried to see if we would um, have the same story, they, they, if any discrepancies between what we were saying. Um, right. um, you know, with with me, they at least like offered me some water. With her, like they they didn't offer her anything. So when I saw her <laughs> in in the room, it was it was crazy. But you know, so this was this was like very scary for me, mainly because. There was a lot of waiting. I didn't know what was happening and the uncertainty of everything. But eventually, you know, like eventually, like there is this like a bit of a common sense being applied here. And they realized, you know, um, that I wasn't a spy, essentially, because that's what that was like the, the assumption. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And, and last year I have went through the same thing. Basically, I went through this, exactly the same thing. This time, it was a place. There was a bunch of raiders. Yeah, and it just and it was just exactly exactly the same story. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, the things we do, eh? <laughs> okay, let's move on now. We're going to shift gears and we're going to talk about your podcast, the Chasing Bandos podcast, the Big Kahuna, the Big Urbex podcast that everybody listens to. You've talked to everyone from the big dogs to the little pups and everyone in between. You're coming up on your 100th episode. Uh, you've had 100,000 downloads plus at this point, major milestone. Uh, what made you decide to jump into podcasting? Um, it was uh, the same story as you, Dave. Uh, exactly the same story. I uh, was invited to a photography podcast. I was uh, asked to appear as a guest. Um, and after that, I thought to myself, and it was also Corona. It is, this was during Corona. Um, right. so we were all kind of stuck at home uh, as well. I also broke up with my girlfriend. So all of a sudden, you know, uh, there was more time. So kind of like everything kind of lined up and I thought to myself, wow, this is pretty cool. And I also, I really didn't see any podcasts about Urbex. Like I didn't, right. I didn't. Uh, I think in the past I, I would find something that people had some attempts, but they didn't really follow up and they were not consistent um, right. and they stopped. But I just thought to myself, you know what? I don't have exploring friends in China. I, I really don't know how things are in America, in Canada, in Europe. Like I don't know what uh, what motivations people have and why they do this so in a way it was like a little therapy session for me and i really really admire the explorers and they give me the motivation because like many times i would ask myself like oh my god okay right do i do should i do this do i go do i go and do i do this again um do i yeah. get in trouble again and, but then the moment, you know, like the moment I heard someone being passionate about exploring and telling me stories, I was right away. I was like, whoa, yeah, boom. It's like a boost of energy. And then here we go. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And it's, it's other, I, I think you make a good point. Other explorers will give you the push to push your own boundaries. Like, you know, I know I've done things that other people have looked up to. And then I, uh, the same with me, there's other explorers out there that are doing stuff that blow my mind. And it's like, man, I got to get out of these stupid mm. houses and hospitals and find some, something bigger, something more. But where I live, there's only so much, you know, mm. and I don't have 
I don't have currently have the ability or the means to travel to Europe mm. like a lot of people do or, you know, all over mm. the United States like other people do. But mm. it is listening to other people's stories and seeing other people's pictures mm. that do inspire you and, and make you really realize that you got to push your boundaries and try something else. And that's where, like, mm. I'll sit here at home thinking, like, man, what can I do next? You know, I've done this mm. prison. I've done this power plant. I've done this time capsule. What, what can I find? You know, what can mm. I make my next project? And you're right. It's listening to other people's stories that, that make me um, want to do better, right? Yeah, yeah. And you are yeah. very creative, Dave. And you, you like, you're always looking for, that's the pressure I get. Like you, you're looking for like this, this is a project. Like you're looking for something. Always. You, yeah, you're not yeah. just, you don't just settle with like, I go exploring and I'm fine with it. I just <laughs> like, you always try to do something with it, you know, like documentary or, or this, or now it's a mm -hmm. podcast. So like, I, look, people like you, I, this is example of what I'm talking about. I love to hear and talk to people like you. That's great. I really appreciate that. Mm. Glad to be one yeah. of those people. So talking about people that are nothing like me, we're going to talk about some of the big dogs in the hobby. You have talked to people in different countries, people of different mm. abilities, and you've talked to some of the real OGs. You talked to Moses Gates, Bradley Garrett, and John mm. Law. All the mm. way from you know, the top of the, you know, the big dogs, again, like I said, down to modern day mm. explorers. So in your experience in talking with all of these different types of people like Moses, Bradley, and John, what do you see as the differences between the old generation and the current generation of explorers? Is there like a difference, like a major difference mm -hmm. between the way, you know, their way of thinking versus our way of thinking? And, you know, what do you, do you see anything mm -hmm. there that that's sort of conversation worthy? You know, it's, this is a difficult question. This is a, it's a, it's one of those questions where I don't instantly have an answer. Um, mm -hmm. I, I am, I am thinking, you know, uh, I, I did talk. Yeah. I did talk to, they are they're great. Like John Law, my God, like the guy you could spend uh, 24 hours and he would do, he wouldn't shut up and you would be like <laughs> hearing. No, no. I mean it in like a positive way. Like a good uh, way. Yeah. He, yeah, 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 yeah. It was be it would be yeah. a story after story after story, and yeah, it, it, amazing. I just, I think it was just it was just different world back then. I think mm -hmm. the social media uh, has a different effect on people. I think back then it was about experiencing the you know making the memories it was actually experiencing the place um you know john law goes exploring with he still goes by the way 60 year old he still yeah. goes yeah um he he said to me like you know the people i go to they are really good photographers so i don't really take pictures they're like i just let them take pictures and right so the, the guy goes and he just he just um experiencing it now people like moses gates of steve or steve duncan you know back in the day or those og guys from the uk scene from the 28 days later mm -hmm. you know they this was like um there was no instagram they had their own websites so right. in in order for them for the community to know what was happening you know people would wait until this guy makes a post about like what he's done or what right. she's done. And, and it was like, um, people took more effort to describe the whole journey. Uh, they would, they, th those posts were very, very much like, there's a lot of details there, uh, describing yes. the whole adventure, sharing the pictures was obviously uh, very important, but I don't think it was, as important as it is now and it was more about having that experience of of being somewhere and like you know experiencing the place yeah and i think uh you know with with time a lot of that is getting lost and you know now mm. it's about the shot and and not so much mm. telling the story which is one of the reasons why i like 
a the podcast and and b something like say my website or some other friends of ours who have websites where you actually tell a story and you're not mm. just blasting pictures out there there's always a story behind the experience right mm. and 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 dave this is exactly like why i i started asking people like would you go exploring without camera and i think it's yeah. a difficult question <laughs> It's totally, a, yeah, yeah, it's a hard question to answer because mm. like mm. that would be a totally different experience, but you want to know something? The day you go exploring without a camera is when the coolest shit is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing you really want to capture on camera, it's going to oh, be yeah. that day <laughs> yeah. that you don't have your camera with you, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so on, on, the, on the same page, talking about the different types of people who you've talked to from different eras of, of the hobby, you've heard all about drama and politics from Europe, the mm. USA, and Canada. If anyone that I know is qualified to answer this question, it's you. Do the drama and politics and overbearing opinions of exploring cross borders? No. Oh. It's, or is the culture the, the same the, no matter where we go? The same cesspool everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> everywhere. And you know, it's funny because I today I talked to Silogen, who is a bit of an OG guy back in the day. Uh, he was the drain king. And he okay. told me, he told me, don't don't go, don't bother with the politics, just avoid that, avoid the group <laughs> politics. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I I just think that, you know, we have a very uh, a broad spe spectrum of people, first of all, people who are doing this hobby. We yeah. have, you know, have all sorts of uh, walk of life, you know, f from teachers to uh, shop assistants, or from you know uh, professors to we have, even have cops like, doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. So, I, I think with this, um, and and also it's like um, it's like uh, I think you must be a little bit of a rebel inside, right? In order to do this, you have to be because yeah, yeah. because 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 like ultimately you, you are doing something that's not uh, it's kind of on the gray area, and people have their own opinions. It's not like there is a, a ten commandments and there's a you know bunch of laws, and they tell you like <laughs> what to do, what not to do. It's more of a common sense and like what it's right for you to do. And a lot of the times those conflicts, they come from maybe lack of communication. We communicate online through text mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is different. I think if all those conversations were, you know, video call or face to face, I'm sure that majority would, of them wouldn't happen. Oh, um, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. And people feel like a little bit overprotected. There is this, there is this kind of like a little bit of bravado and like this whole idea of like, you know, I've done the work. I found this place. I don't want to like <laughs> make this easy for someone else because mm -hmm. like I've, I've spent so much time doing this. So why well, should I just yeah. give this to someone and, and, and then they, they spend no effort whatsoever. So yeah. you see when, when people see this, when other explorers see other people just like willy nilly sharing stuff and trading and all this stuff, it, yeah. it, it, it makes your blood boil, I, I think. And maybe mm -hmm. that's where the, those, those reactions are coming from. And there's so much gossip and, 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 and things like that and judging. And, and so, um, you know, I don't want to be over negative, uh, because right. Right. quite frankly, most of the stuff does not apply to me. Um, mm -hmm. but, I just hear this, like, you know, if you have an interview with an explorer and you bring this topic, it, there's always something, um, yeah. Yeah. which is unfortunate, but like, who was it? Like, I think Sony, 
Sony exploring with Sony, he said like, why don't, why can't we just all be friends guys? Like, come yeah, on, yeah, like, yeah. can we just all get along? Let's just get along. You know, it's some, it's some shitty abandoned place guys. Come on. Right. Yeah. You know, I think about other hobbies. I think about like, like mm. if I decided to quit exploring and take up knitting, is there going to be <laughs> someone in the knitting community who's going to contact my employer because they don't like me? Or, yes. You know, <laughs> you know what? You know what? If there is an archery competition and then you have two <laughs> guys competing against each other, or hating each other, I'm sure they have some, or like their own yeah. drama, their own archery clubs. You know, this club is better than you guys. And like, yeah, yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure there is. Like, like, I know, like in bird photography, okay. When there is an owl's, what if it's owls? I don't know what it's called. That where, where an owl's nest, where owls are hanging out, or a fox's den. Photographers are so secretive because you know if I find a fox's den that has baby foxes, I'm going to mm. go take pictures of that fox's den and I'm going to tell oh, really? a couple of friends. But you're not oh, supposed wow. to tell publicly where that fox's den is because oh. everybody will congregate on that fox's den and take pictures and cause damage to the den and possibly the fox. Same thing goes oh, wow. with owls. When there's an owl's nest up in a tree, everybody wants to take mm. a picture of the great horned owl or the white snowy owl. Mm. And it's just like exploring. You're supposed to be secretive of the location of the eagle, of the owl, of the fox's den, so wow. that people don't congregate and en masse go to that location. It's exactly... Like there's, there's probably, I hate to say the name, there's probably a Bill Finnan of the bird photography community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 There must be. Guys, we need to know where all the owls are. <laughs> Share those locations of those owls. Come on. There's a discord. <laughs> for there's the a owl. discord. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, talking about, you know, the, the I just find I have in this hobby, it's been 11 years for me. I've met the best people I've ever met. And I've met the absolutely piece, worst pieces of shit that I've ever met in my life in this hobby. People who, you know, if you give one slight against them, that mm. means to them, the world is theirs to destroy your life. <laughs> you know, mm. I said something negative about you. Well, now I'm going to, I'm going to phone your wife. Mm. I'm going to tell your wife that you've had an affair. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to call your boss at work and tell him what you do for a mm. hobby. I'm going to ruin your life just because I said something against you. Like what, what kind of people they, does this hobby, you know, Dave. There are so many narcissists. There are so many narcissists oh, in this hobby. And word. I think, yeah. and, and, and it's, um, and I think the social media, like exacerbates that makes it worse. Yeah. 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 Anyways, I, this mm. is a topic I could go on about forever, but mm. I just know bringing it up will just cause unnecessary drama in my life. So I'm going to move on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to yeah. back to the podcast. Um, yep. So you've talked to so many people mm. who is on your wish list that you have not yet interviewed. Who are you trying to get that you haven't got yet? Yeah. So uh, what I do is behind the scenes, I am trying to come up with like the mini series. Cause I am, um, kind of, we finished the mini series. I had three mini series on the pod. It was Chernobyl and uh, North Korea yeah. and, Bur and Buran. Buran. And yeah. I, um, there's obviously so many explorers that I would like to talk to, but they just don't speak good English. Like the, the English right. is not good enough for the podcast, right? Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, that's that's the case. Um, but there are those like OG, old school explorers that I, mm -hmm. uh, from like the British scene and um, some of Australians as well. And yep. for, uh, I would, I, I have to say like Steve Duncan, um, I was so close. Like this guy is a legend, uh, absolute yeah, legend. Yeah. I, I already talked to him on the phone and everything. And it's just yeah. so hard to get through to this guy. <laughs> and, and this, and all of a sudden it's just like, it just didn't, never happened. It just never happened. Like it's uh, like it, the contact bad. stopped. And I was so, I was so excited to talk to him and maybe I took too yeah. long to, to organize, but I don't know. But, um, 
uh, yeah, so so I, I kind of work, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I, I kind of worked on the uh, History of Urbex miniseries. Okay, and I, yeah. And it's just taking so long. This is taking so long because it's just something I don't want to do it. I don't want to make mistakes with this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, so I, I'll give you an example. So uh, uh, Suicide Club and John Law, right? Like uh, mm-hmm. ni- late, late 1970s with, uh, uh, with like exploring in San Francisco. You know, yeah. like what, what I could do is just talk to John Law and just get his word for it and like just, just do that, use him, right? And, but, right. Uh, but like John Law sees this through his own eyes, right? There were many other members of that club totally. that might yeah. that might see this from a different perspective. And so to, trying to find those people, trying to talk to them, trying to convince them to talk to me, um, it is difficult. It is. I, I I genuinely sometimes think that this is never gonna. I never gonna finish this. Um, <laughs> but. But I, I, I'm trying. I, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, I was. Yeah. I was also. I was also interviewing people that I spent ages. I spent hours talking to, and then all of a sudden they changed their mind and they were like, "Oh wow! I, yeah, yeah, yeah! Don't, don't use this. I don't want to be involved yeah. anymore." And you know, I just. I mean, to be honest, like it's my audio, right? But I. Yeah. I respect their opinion. Like I totally, respect yeah, the decision. Yeah. So I just don't yeah. want to be an asshole. Um, but yeah, so, 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 so yeah, there's, I would say those uh, old school, old school explorers. I just love those stories of like how it was back in the day, what they went yeah. through, you know, cracking those like uh, London underground stations, mm-hmm. you know, like abandoned stations, you know, from World War Two. Like, yeah, it's just yeah, insane, yeah. insane stuff. So mm-hmm. keeping on the topic of podcasts, there's a few of us now. So you've got uh, Mr. P yep. does a podcast. Matthew from Abandoned America, he's got one. Uh, K from No Tracer, they've got one. Uh, now you've got me. Mm-hmm. Do you see this getting competitive and getting ugly? Or do you think we can all coexist in the podcasting universe? I <laughs> would I would I would say you know the guy from Abandoned America I yeah, yeah someone I think I think Justin mentioned this guy to me I think I would like to talk to him for sure um yeah no traces is a bit different I would say uh there's a d- different format there um yeah I think you know you are going to do video as well you said that I don't know what's your, like, do you plan to focus on Canada? Do you plan to focus like on the, anyone? Um, a- anyone, anyone. Like there is yeah. no, like right now there's really, there, there is no podcast in Canada for exploring. So mm. I am going to focus a lot on who we have here in Canada, mm. but I mean, mm. I definitely want to bring in more and more international explorers uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. No, no, no. Like, listen, guy, listen, Dave, um, Ultimately, it's uh, uh, it's another uh, story that the listener can listen to. So, yeah. uh, you know, those times where you are on the road, you're driving somewhere, and you, you know they can, someone can pick up a, a episode here, episode there, and all of a sudden, your whole journey just went. You know, you know, yeah, listen to totally. three different stories, amazing. So yeah. for me. It's like this idea of like, if I can somehow contribute to your experience of exploring, um, I've been told how people would listen to a podcast in the car and like, it would take them ages because they would pause and they would discuss. Uh, and yeah, it's just, yeah. and it's just amazing to hear that. Um, I would love if we all, um, I think I mentioned this to you privately, right? Like if we did, all yeah. the hosts, if we have like an annual meeting where we just talk about talk smack about the podcasting you know <laughs> once, experiences. yeah 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 once a year i think it would be nice and i think i think you know in this hobby in in in, in urbex like you we just mentioned before there's a lot of drama a lot of animosities i think if we can lead by example by supporting each other um yeah i, I yeah. think that would be great i think that would be amazing two more questions if mm. there's a young explorer out there who's ready to pick up a camera and get into the hobby and start exploring. What advice would you give to that person? Mm, I would say, I would really, yeah. If that person really likes 
the abandoned places and they discover this and they want to do it. I would say, you know what? Just make those mistakes, dude. Like, I don't think nothing I will say to this person is going to change. Who can change someone's mind these days? Or who can <laughs> tell you what to do? Like, I think it's yeah. part, it, unfortunately, I think it's part of the game. All those mm-hmm. mistakes that we made when we st- when we were starting, asking for locations or or just being like such a idiot and and, and just <laughs> We've all not, done it. Yeah, 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 like not knowing and 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 someone is being a dick to you and pointing out to you, like we had that debate about elite, elitism, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And I think I think you just need to you need to find out. You just really need to find out because, like, how else are you going to? Um, learn. And if you do find out and you don't change your behavior, then, you know, you know, not, not worth it. Cause this is a special hobby. This is really uh, something that changed my life. And, you know, I almost died, but I am not going to stop it because of it. Right. I am. I'm going to try to, you know, look more closely at the floor. Um, (laughs) But, but I will not stop it. And um, yeah, I think that's that's where I would go with that. I have my last question is something that I'm keeping track of. Um, mm. I, I was trying to think of, you know, what can I do like like you do with uh, with rapid fire that will, you know, mm. carry on from every episode and I can keep track of. Mm. So mm. the question is, what is in your camera bag? What is in my camera bag? You know, yeah, I... What's, what, Dave, Dave, you know my opinion on tripods and stuff like that. And I Uh travel light. I really don't like bringing a lot of things. And also Mm -hmm. the thing is, this might come as a surprise. I don't really consider myself a photographer. I would Mm -hmm. just say that I'm more like an explorer with a camera. I have one lens. I have one lens. I have one. <laughs> I got two. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I what, have. Now, I, the question is, though, what kind of camera are you using? Yeah, I have. I have my Sony. I have my Sony. Uh, Sony. Okay. A seven. A seven R three. Um, okay. I have. I will. I will not leave the house without the drone. Uh, yeah. my little bird, my little bird. I, 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 it's yeah. always in my bag. Camera is in my bag. Lately, I would bring GoPro. Uh, and they use it from time to time, but it's like, I'm so, most of the time I'm really frustrated with it. Um, <laughs> what else do I bring? Um, I bring wet wipes. <clears throat> I uh-huh. think you know why. Yeah. Yep. And bottle yep. of water, and that's it. <laughs> Hand sanitizer, wet wipes, bottle of water. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty Good. much. Okay. That's, mm. yeah. So you're Sony. So what I'm keeping track of is how many people are Nikon versus mm. Canon versus Sony. So you, I don't have enough data right now to put it up, but we're going to keep I just, track of that. I, Dave, I, I just, don't you think that those, the, the current uh, cameras, the technology is so great that like, does it like, does it really matter? Like it probably doesn't really, matter. They're all the same, but, same technology. But, yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, because like I am not a photographer and right. one of the things I am looking forward to is to next year, uh, this year, to meet explorers and travel. Like, you know, when I told people that I'm going to back to Europe, I already been invited mm-hmm. to, 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 to trips. Um, so I, I'll be like a tourist, uh, basically. Right. Yeah. And, but actually the, I think one of the uh, things that I'm really looking forward to, not just the fact that meeting the people that I talk to, um, and explore with them and you you know but it actually just to see what do they do to see mm-hmm. how they take pictures um yeah. I, I would like to observe them i would like to ask them questions because you know what like I, yeah. I i i don't really this idea like uh you know i go in i take my photo and then like i, I just you know whatever looks good to me i i take pictures of and then Right. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. It, I don't really spend too much thinking about this whole photography. I really don't. Right. Right. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. 
Uh, yeah. Anything else you uh, want that you want to add? Have we missed anything? Anything you'd like to add before we wrap up? Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I really appreciate it that you uh, wanted to have me on very early on in your podcasting career. That's mm-hmm. I really <laughs> appreciate that, uh, Dave. I, um, you know, I always enjoy listening to you, and I always, um, you know, whenever. Like you are one of those people now that um, it's kind of like almost like a go-to. I, I find excuses to bring my favorite people on the pod with mm-hmm. those 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 different kind of ideas like debate this or Bill Finn's right. birthday yeah. <laughs> or, or other or other things. So so um, I, I just really uh, really appreciate the fact that um, we got to know each other a little bit, and I really hope that there will be a chance for me to fly to Canada and, totally. um, yeah. and, and yeah, and, and, and meet and like, just, just go and do something, you know, go and to see some shitty house in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We don't have space shuttles in Canada, but I'll take you to something, something pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but that's, that's really it. And then, um, yeah, best of luck and you will, I'm sure you know by now how much time it takes to <laughs> to edit. It is a lot of all. work. It is a lot of work, especially yeah. adding the video component adds even mm. more. Oh, yeah. uh, because oh, when yeah. you're talking, I'm going to over I'm overlaying footage mm. and pictures. It's not mm. you know it's it's not just slice splicing up the mm. the the audio. Now it's a whole. Yeah. Other. Anyways, Greg, thanks yeah. so much for joining us on the episode three of the. All Access Freetography Podcast. Thanks for being here. It's uh, almost your bedtime over there in China. So uh, yes. thanks for joining us, everybody. All of Greg's links are down below. Make sure you're following the Chasing Bandos podcast and Greg Abandon. All of his links are down below. Thanks for coming, Greg. See you next time. Awesome. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, guys. That was Greg Abandon. What a great interview. I knew he was going to be good. I knew he was going to have a lot of great stories and some really good insights I don't know very many people in this hobby that have met and or talked to as many people as him. So he's got some great insights into the hobby. And again, hit the links down below, follow and subscribe to the Chasing Bandos podcast, and also follow Greg Abandon on his personal account. Now, I touched on Greg and his accident, and he was at a power plant in China, and he fell through a floor, and he dropped five stories. And one of the only things that saved him was the fact that he landed on a soft pile of coal, ash, and dust. He did end up really hurting himself. Uh, He had to call emergency services to come and get him. He's now got pins and rods in his leg. It goes without saying in this hobby that safety is of the utmost importance. And while we all say, I'm very careful, I'm as careful as I can be, no matter how careful you are, something can happen. So it is now Urbex book club time and we're going to open up the uh, access all areas book like we do at the end of every episode and i'm going to find something that we talked about in the podcast and see what jeff chapman also known as Mindylicious, had to say about that very topic in 2005 so today we're going to the portion called abandoned sites and we're going to go to page 89 where Jeff talks about safety issue. This is highly relevant to what happened to Greg. Unfortunately, there's a good possibility of getting injured at abandoned sites. If you aren't careful, and sometimes even if you think you are, getting a tetanus shot in advance is both fun and practical. When you're visiting an abandoned site, bear in mind that the building is not meant for use by the general public, and that is entirely up to you to keep yourself alive. Explore abandoned sites slowly, Dress sensibly and don't go alone. When navigating an abandoned building, don't place too much confidence in floors and ceilings. In many old buildings, there are large holes in the floors, or the floors are so old and flooded that they're on the very verge of collapse. Stay away from sagging floors, test the floors in buildings the same way you would test thin ice, and remember that sections of abandoned buildings do occasionally just topple even when there's no one in them. There it is, guys. There's a little bit of insight from Jeff Chapman, the late, great Ninjalicious, a pioneer of the hobby as we know it now, and his book, Access All Areas. There is a link in the description down below where you can go to Amazon and order yourself a copy of Access All Areas.
So real quick before we wrap up, I'll give you guys a little bit of a heads up of what's coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, next week, we're going to talk to Ethan Minnie. Next, we're going to talk to Brent from Abandoned Urbex Canada. Um, I'm hoping to get an interview with my good friend, Germ9. He was instrumental in helping to mold and guide me into the type of explorer that I am and how I document and how I operate my own website. Uh, very good friend of mine. We're going to talk to him next. Very exciting. We do have an episode lined up with a criminal lawyer and she's going to talk to us for about a half an hour about some of the things we need to keep in mind when it comes to the law and what some of the ramifications can be to trespassing, breaking and entering, some things that you might want to keep in mind when you're exploring uh, if you don't want to get in trouble with the law. So that's it, guys. This has been episode three. We're still here. We're still doing it. Thanks so much for being here. Again, like I said earlier, whatever podcast channel you're listening to, if you're able to give this podcast a review, please do. That's it, guys. Gotta go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you guys next week. Peace.